So, um, hi everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, so, let me start this. Yeah. So, my name is Ali. Uh, I work for Red Hat. I'm a senior software engineer. I'm working on uh, Knative project and OpenShift serverless at Red Hat. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about serverless Java in the cloud, cloud native world. Um, so, I work on Knative Eventing. I'm an Apache committer since 2010. I'm not very active, but you know, we like Apache. So yeah, that's why I wanted to have it there. Um, I live in Istanbul. I work remotely. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, Knative and then a little bit again, a little bit about Quarkus. So uh, these are big subjects. We cannot like explain everything, but I will touch um, the important points, why uh, Knative or why Quarkus matters, and why you can use Quarkus in the serverless world with Knative. Um, I will also do some um, small demo. So, okay, let's start with Knative. So, um, so the story is a bit long so there were you know the gold good old monoliths they were broken down into smaller components then came the microservices era and then there were big problems about you know uh, how to do microservices all these little things then came containers and then there was issues there were issues with containers because it was hard to orchestrate them then came kubernetes and now we are um, already in the next stage. So Kubernetes is cool, but we want to uh, make better resource utilization and then um, also make things easier, even on Kubernetes, which is kind of easy compared to uh, containers and all the other bare metal stuff, but still deploy and managing your workload on Kubernetes is still hard. So Knative, kind of helps with all of these stuff. So Knative um, is, this is the definition, Kubernetes-based platform to deploy and manage modern serv serverless workloads. So that means uh, it works on Kubernetes, on any Kubernetes. There is no vendor lock, um, which is a, very, very important thing when you think about all the other serverless options. Um, it is serverless on Kubernetes, but there is big discussions about definition of serverless and etc. so I will not go in there. Um, so it can run on public cloud or it can run on premise because it doesn't matter. It's your Kubernetes cluster, wherever you have your Kubernetes cluster, Kubernetes will run on it. And the good thing is it's not like fully abstracted. You can still access to Kubernetes stuff uh, if needed. Like you can still have your pods, you can still have your regular deployments and stuff. And uh, you can actually use them in Knative. That means uh, you can uh, construct your uh, system, you can build your system with Kubernetes primitives and Knative. Uh, goodies and it's not just functions like um, um, what what does that mean um, so you don't just upload a zip or something you just have like full life cycle and and everything um, and you can even you know um, use the regular Kubernetes stuff with Knative, like you can uh, bind your Knative services or like sources, for example, with uh, your Kubernetes pods or Kubernetes deployments. So um, there are two big modules. There are two modules in Knative, uh, serving and eventing. Uh, serving is running your applications as pods. So if you have if your application runtime, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can have Java, you can have Python, PHP, whatever you like. 
Uh, as long as it's running in a container, you can run it in serving. Um, there are some, um, of course, uh, not limitations, but there are some requirements. Um, like it, it should respond to port 8080, et cetera. But as long as you have that, yeah, you have your application running with serving. And eventing is, it is there to uh, manage your events. So in a serverless way, in a in an event-driven way. So when you have your events coming, you can just send them to serving services so that they can scale up, down, and things like that. I mean, this is like the basic, most uh, basic usage. And both modules can run standalone. Okay, so Knative Serving. Um, it can auto scale with uh, scale to zero. It supports scale to zero. So when there is no uh, requests coming to your pod, it will, or your service, it will destroy all the pods. It will scale down to zero. Or, where, or when there's a huge load, it will just auto scale to, I don't know, 100 pods and it will um, help handling the, uh, the the spikes in the requests. So it's not just about scaling or uh, in general, not about auto scaling though. It provides lots of nice stuff about networking or managing your applications or you're managing your work workload basically. So it has some nice events networking features like, um, um, or like uh, revisions and stuff so what, what that means revisions is uh, things are immutable, immutable revisions. So when you create a revision, when you create a service and then you create a revision for it, and then you can always come back to the previous revision very, very, very easily. So this is like deployment uh, functionalities that Knative serving provides. It provides things like traffic serving, uh, traffic splitting, and um, some of the also, so this, these are the things that I mentioned as advanced networking, uh, things like that, or um, not just randomly splitting, but also uh, splitting the traffic based on requests. Like if you want to handle, for example, one scenario would be, if you want to handle uh, requests from some specific users uh, or re redirect requests from some specific users to a specific version, of, a, of your application for A-B testing or for other reasons. Yeah, for example, these kind of stuff you can do with Knative very easily. So um, there are some simpl simplifications though. Uh, so there, it can only listen one part of your application. Uh, there cannot be any persistent volumes. I think they were working on it. I'm not sure what the uh, latest status is and you can only have a single container. So these things are there to make things easier, to uh, easier to, to make it easier to manage your workload. I will also talk a little bit about um, Knative eventing. Um, so here I'm, I will, uh, the, the title for the session is Event-driven event -driven serverless Java. So I will talk more about Knative eventing. Uh, for Knative serving, we can think as like uh, you can run your application with it, and it will scale down to zero. It will scale to hundred if needed, and things like that. Um, so Knative eventing is um, it's again. Um, very similar to Knative Serving about uh, running serverless workloads, but this time we are more interested in e event-driven uh, part of our event-driven behaviors. Uh, so there's basically two parts. There is the core system, um, and there are also the plug-and-play components. Like um, core system, what I mean by that is, um, like the eventing, Knative eventing's own control plane, <clears throat> which is handling things like generic things like subscriptions and and um, things like that. But there is also some plug and play components. 
like um, for example Apache Kafka source or AWS SQS source or uh, Kafka sync and things like that. So these are more like uh, technology dependent or um, uh, components that talk some specific protocols so that you can just take them and put in your uh, event flow and um, you don't have to write your own application, for example, to talk to AWS uh, queue system. So there are some basic building blocks um, for eventing. Um, so these are like the lists, but these are like uh, generic uh, names. So source, okay, source for what? So source is, um, yeah, I will go detail in, in these, but um, let me talk about, let me start with uh, source. Uh, so source is basically very simple. You have a message origin and then you receive an origin specific event from that origin. The source's job is to convert that into a specific event type, which is called cloud event type, um, so that Knative can understand what it is, like, or Knative can understand uh, what the event is. Knative always talks in cloud events. So you cannot just send, for example, in terms of, let's say, GitHub. Um, the message origin here would be GitHub, and then you would receive some uh, some event from GitHub to your webhook, for example, in normal case, uh, when you don't think about Knative uh, source, uh, which will have, like, uh, it could be, I think GitHub sends JSON, and what source does is uh, convert that, take that JSON, uh, wrap it in a cloud event, which is also, uh, which could be also JSON or it could be kind of binary format. And then source's job is then over because it will get the event, it will send it to uh, the, send it to, to the sync that is defined in the source. So source is uh, basically, the thing that fetches events or that receives events from origins and then it uh, helps um, getting the events into Knative eventing system to your workflow. Uh, so some examples are Apache Kafka source. Um, so yeah, it for example, Kafka source, what it does is think, uh, imagine there's a topic here in the message origin there is a Kafka topic, the Kafka topic uh, will, or the source will consume messages from Kafka topic. Uh, and the messages doesn't always, uh, uh, to, the messages in the Kafka topic doesn't have to be like JSON or something. It could be like plain text. And then the source will convert it to a cloud event, which could be JSON or binary. And then it will get into your event flow. Or other examples are AWS SQS or Kubernetes API server itself. If you want to use Knative as like something to monitor your own, your own cluster, then there is a API server source uh, which receives events like pod created, namespace deleted, etc. things like that. Or uh, there is also something called container source, which is actually useful if you want to convert your legacy applications to Knative applications. So you can just use any container with container source. Uh, the container source will um, receive events uh, from like from the container and it will send it to the uh, uh, Knative eventing system, basically. Okay, so I talked about source. There's channels, subscriptions, broker, trigger, etc. There's a lot of stuff. Um, so again, source to sync. Okay. Um, okay, we have, we received the message from origin, and then the source converted to cloud event. Then there's the source uh, has uh, it, it is coupled with this thing, so source knows where to send the event. 
uh, example things would be like what source can talk to can be can be a Knative service, like a user application that is running as a Knative service, so that when you have a lot of uh, messages coming from the source, Knative serving will know that there's a lot of requests coming for the service. So let me, it will do like um, auto scale the service up so that you can handle the, uh, or you can consume messages in a faster rate. Or it can be like plug and play Knative syncs. You can just get your message from, for example, Kafka, convert it to cloud event, and then send it to Redis. I mean, this is like the most simple scenario. We, we will definitely have uh, some processing in, in between. Or it can be a Knative channel, which I will talk now. Um, so channel is another primitive uh, in Knative eventing. What K channel does is it supports uh, fanning out. I mean, that is the most important aspect and it, it provides decoupling. So when you send events to a channel, so the channel doesn't really receive events like the source, uh, but you can have a source here on the left. So the source can send events to channel and then channel will uh, send the events to its subscribers. So here I have one, two, two events and both of the uh, syncs here. Sync, what I mean by sync is it could be anything. It could be random user application. It could be Knative serving application, etc. cetera. Um, channel will deliver these events to the syncs. Um, so some example channels are in-memory channels, which are not really reliable in a production environment. So you just send it, it will keep it in the RAM. Uh, there is also Apache Kafka channel and there is GCP pub sub channel, for example. So what's happening? Uh, so what is more uh, like, uh, what could be a good example is Kafka channel. Um, so with Kafka, if you, if you use Kafka channel, unlike in memory channel, you you persist the events you receive so that you don't lose events. And also um, you synchronize your uh, consumers with your producers. So um, in, in Kafka channel, what's happening is, let's say I in the Kafka topic here, I have these three events and another event is coming to the Kafka channel. That event will go into the Kafka topic and it will stay there until it's that event's turn to be processed by the Kafka channel. So this is uh, very useful when you have like a lot of, when you have a, a event producer that is generating a lot of events, but you cannot keep up processing these events. So Kafka channel will know uh, when the processing on the right side is done because um, what happens is it sends this event to the uh, processor or let me, say, uh, let me say consumer. It will wait until the request is 200, like it's, it's, it's finished. So um, this provides this kind of synchronization mechanism or it is uh, making sure this thing doesn't get uh, or the the what I mean by this thing is the consumer doesn't uh, doesn't crash or it doesn't auto scale to thousands of nodes or something and it doesn't uh, go, and it and it with it will lag but it, it's okay Okay, so event comes here, it will process the first event first, and then uh, it will then go with the second event and the third event and the fourth event. And if you have things in parallel, it will keep the uh, uh, the indexing or where, where the processor or the consumer actually, where the consumer uh, was last at. So what I mean by this, Maybe this consumer here at the top, which is not there, but 
yeah, uh, it is way slow, way slower than another consumer. So it will not wait until <coughs> the slow consumer is actually consuming the event. Um, so this is from the en Enterprise Integration Patterns book. There's a, here there's a pattern called Publish Subscribe Channel. So what happens here is there is a message coming from the origin um, and this event uh, from the message origin or the message is, get, is received with a source, but there is also other uh, events coming from other sources. It could be even a in-cluster application. It could be another source. So all these things can be gathered in a channel and then they can be sent to uh, the subscribers for the channel in a single point. Um, so what this provides is you, you, you really decouple your syncs with all these events, uh, event sources, event generators. So think of this like a broker or a message bus, but we actually have a better solution for brokers. So this is again another uh, um, enterprise integration pattern, which is called content-based router. And this is how you can do that with Knative eventing. So we also have a construct called broker and brokers talk to triggers. Um, here, it is very similar to the previous one. If you have a look, it's very, very, very similar, except uh, with this, this is an improved version. You can say this is an improved version of the previous uh, system. And with this one, you also have filters. So this thing can say, I want to only receive green events, which are sent by this source. And this thing can say, I want to receive uh, only the blue events and which is sent by this source. And I mean, what things actually don't talk to broker, but things say, uh, things create, or you create a trigger, uh, which tells broker to send uh, these blue events to that thing. Okay, so I, I found this uh, online, honestly. Uh, this is a good example of how you can do a big data and big data in machine learning pipeline. So this is like general uh, structure. You, you have the collection phase here where you collect events from all these different sources, mobile devices, browsers, Twitters, etc. And then you send them to, for example, in AWS case, you send them to um, S3 or some <clears throat> other place, etc. And then you prepare the data, you make it um, like you convert the data to another format because if, if your computation requires it. And if, uh, finally, you compute and then you present what you computed. So this is like um, preference architecture or something like that. And if you want to do this with Knative, this is one example. And um, you always do this stuff in a serverless way with Knative. Um, so for example, in the collection, you have a bunch of clients and then these clients send data to, let's say, REST endpoints or MQTT, or it can directly talk to Kafka, like your clients can send events directly to Kafka. So this is the ingestion page, and your data lake here is Kafka. And when you want to prepare your data, what you can do is you just get events from Kafka, and Kafka source will uh, make sure, or not Kafka source, but Knative service, Knative serving will make sure this service is auto-scaled to 
thousands, even thousands of pods if there's too many events coming from the Kafka source. So you can just send everything to Kafka. Kafka source will fetch them. It will send it to Knative service. You can have a Knative sequence here. So there's a special construct called sequence. Uh, you just, what, what, what sequence does is you process something here uh, or you compute something here from your row images, uh, row, um, row events, sorry. And then the second service will uh, prepare the um, events a little bit more, like they can, they can mutate the event a little bit more or they can compute something new. Um, based on the output of the other first service. And then it can send it to uh, another Kafka uh, topic using a Kafka sync. And then with that, you can, uh, so eventually you have your data warehouse where you have, uh, where you can present your uh, data with dashboard or you can send an email, etc. So what you write here, is or what you don't write here, let me focus on that. Uh, so you use Kafka, that's for sure. You use MQTT, you, you write your own REST services, but here is the good part. So you don't have to do any custom application to talk to Kafka. Or if you don't like fetch for, if, for fetching events from Kafka or similarly, um, you don't have to talk to Kafka again to send your events to Kafka. and one advantage of this is you are not locked into Kafka. If you want to switch to, for example, I just put that, put that randomly here, Google Cloud Storage, for example. What you need to do is you just change your sources and your syncs. And if you use channel, maybe you can use Google uh, GCP sub, pop sub channel and something like that. So here I had uh, Kafka and I decided I want to use Google Cloud Storage and then I will just use Google Cloud Storage source. The My custom applications here that um, mutate the events, they're still the same. Here I can have a Google Cloud Storage sync. I don't know if it exists, but I'm just giving like, um, um, I just want you to uh, understand the like the basic idea. And if, if something like that exists, then I just give it to Google Cloud Storage Sync, and then the rest is still the same. Um, so this is like the big idea uh, of the plug and play components. Otherwise, you can just talk to Kafka yourself. You can write your application that receives from Kafka topics. You can do all these services. Um, with or without Knative serving, that means with or without uh, serverless. And then you can just, again, write your own application to send events to Kafka Sync. But if you want to switch from Kafka to something else, then you need to write again. And also all these Kafka sources, Kafka Syncs, Kafka Channels, etc., they're um, developed in the upstream community. And they are like a lot of eyes, with a lot of eyes. They're battle tested, they're used in production. So maybe it's a better idea to just use these stuff, plug and play component, instead of writing applications that talk to Kafka. So I know all of these stuff, like all these uh, things that are talking to Kafka or to other systems. I know about Camel, Apache Camel. Uh, so there's also, you can do a lot of integration there um, but here, the advantage is you can do all these stuff in a serverless way and you make use uh, where you can use Knative servings uh, nice advantages. And you also use Knative eventing to make everything event driven and scale to zero if necessary. Okay, so. Um, this was kind of Knative, and there is also Quarkus. I think I saw a bunch of uh, sessions already in the calendar for the conference about Quarkus. I will, I'm not a Quarkus expert. I will just show how you can use Quarkus in a good way so that you don't have to learn new stuff 
uh, for writing your um, key applications that can run on Knative. Okay, so Quarkus, it's a best of breed of best breed of li Java libraries and standards. It's Kubernetes native. It uses the regular Java stack that many people know, like all the Java people know. Um, the very important point here is uh, basically two things. Fast startup time, which is really important if you want to have something serverless. Cold starts, we don't like them. Uh, if you want to scale from zero to 1,000 pods, it's really important. Also, the low memory and disk footprint, uh, because again, if you want to handle things uh, with Knative, like uh, almost in real time, you will need uh, a lot of pods. You will need uh, you will use a lot of um, containers, and it is very important that you have low memory uh, requirements. And also, Graal VM. It's it's leveraging. Uh, Quarkus can leverage Graal VM for even lower footprints and even faster startup times, which are like ridiculous, really small, uh, really fast. And Quarkus, just to talk about that briefly. So this is, it is using all the uh, regular enterprise stuff that we have seen over the couple of years, like Jux RS, uh, I don't know, micro profile injection, et cetera, all these stuff. And here I have a small um, uh, REST application that is, or not the REST application, but web application, sorry, that handles a post request uh, and it creates a application, a JSON, and it's a blocking one. So it should be kind of familiar if you know already, if you have developed a little bit of uh, Java, especially Java, uh, web applications with Java. Um, so here I will actually, go to a, my demo. Demo is pretty simple. Um, it is one of the parts that I mentioned before. Uh, so I have a message producer here, which creates really a lot of events, messages to, uh, and it sends them to a Kafka topic. And my Kafka source will receive events or fetch or consume events from that um, Kafka topic, and it will send it to the sync. But what we will what we will see is that the pods will uh, we will have like 10, 20 pods, and once the events are done, um, once the uh, message producer is set, done sending events, these pods will delete, so the application will auto scale to zero. This is the address for the demo, like GitHub repository for the demo. Um, okay, so uh, this is the message generator. It's not a Java application. It's, a, it's just sending events to Kafka. So I just wrote a small node application. Um, in this case, in this configuration for the demo, it will actually send 20,000 messages to a special, special uh, topic called Kafka source demo. And this is my Kafka cluster. It's at this address. Uh, I will not run the message generator directly in my machine, like not locally, but I will, uh, I already created an image. So I will create a job like Kubernetes job, a uh, bad job for this uh, image and it will run there. So nothing really fancy here. Just send 20,000 messages to this topic. More interesting part is the sync. So the sync here is, uh, let me go back to, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so this is the message generator. This is the Kafka itself. Uh, this is already deployed on my Kubernetes cluster. Uh, Kafka source I will use 
uh, because it's out of working out of the box. I don't write code for that. <clears throat> and this is the sync. This is again my custom application. So I have this one and this one. Uh, the sync is the Quarkus application. Uh, okay. So it is a. Maybe I should do that, or I should anyway. Um, so it's a very simple application. It just receives a post request and it generates, it produces a JSON uh, output. What it does is it receives the event. It just uh, iterates over the headers. It writes the headers, then it writes the body. That's all. Okay. Um, let me start with uh, with creating the namespace. So this is the thing. I've already built the image for this with Graal VM Sport, so it will run quite fast. And here in the config folder, you can see the resources I will create. Start with the namespace. I just created the, the uh, namespace called my namespace and I will create everything uh, in that namespace. So this is my sync. Uh, so this is the Quarkus application that will receive the events and I deploy it as a Knative, Knative serving service. Um, and this is my image. So these are some fine tuning uh, parameters for hand making uh, sure the auto scale or auto, so auto scaling works out of the box, but these are uh, for dramatic purposes. So in reality, if I don't define these and just do everything by default, the Quarkus application is consuming messages so fast that you don't see any pops scaling up. So I did a little bit of cheating here, uh, but in a real world application, um, you would probably don't need uh, target utilization 10%. You don't need this. This is just too low. But in the real world, you will have like a bunch of clusters and stuff like that where you have like uh, a lot of events. Then you will see uh, the service is scaled up. Okay, this is my thing. And this is the Kafka topic. So I just use StreamZ operator and I just create this Kafka topic. Um, and this is my Kafka source. So what Kafka source does is it receives messages from, uh, where is it? This topic, Kafka source demo topic, which I created earlier. And it will send it to its sync, which is the sync I created earlier. Oh, well, okay, I haven't actually created them. Let me do that. Sync is created, topic is created, source is created. Yeah, so this is this sync is the, uh, sorry, this sync reference is the Knative service that I created before. Okay, so. Um, so I have two things. I have the Kafka source pod, when I check the pods in my new namespace, and I have this, I, I can see the sync. Oops. Yeah, so the sync is running. It's only one pod, and in one or two minutes, I think, it will scale down to zero because there is no requests coming yet although Kafka source is here. Uh, yeah, it's already terminating. Uh, it's terminating uh, because Kafka source is not seeing anything in the topic so that it's not receiving, it's not consuming anything from the topic and it's not sending anything to the, to the sync. But when I create the message generator, finally, um, I will see lots of activity uh, in the sync, I will see lots of syncs, sync pods created. Um, and I will also see something in these syncs, uh, sync pods logs. So, 
yeah, I'll start watching the uh, the logs for the sync containers. Okay, now it's still terminating, but it will be finished soon. Yeah, here I will start watching my message generator pod. And here I'm watching the pods, like to see uh, the number of pods that it will auto scale up to. And now when I, when I create my uh, message generator, yeah. So it is sending messages and I can see it's already, I don't know how much, eight or 10 pods. And, and this part is, this is the uh, syncs log. So it goes, it, it iterates over the headers and then it also uh, writes the body somewhere. Yeah, here, ah, okay, it, writes, it just writes object, object. So now image sending, uh, event sending is done. The message generator sent 20,000 events already and KNAD eventing, uh, serving, sorry, scale my service to eight pods. Yeah, eight pods. And after one or two minutes, we will see that these are all deleted because there is no requests coming for the thing. We can check that later. Yeah, okay, it's already terminating, yeah. It's the time is pretty short to scale to zero. Okay. So this is basically my, kind of my demo. Um, Um, so the takeaways here are Knative uh, provides better workload management um, on top of Kubernetes. Uh, it allows things to scale dynamic, dynamically and uh, including uh, to zero, but also there are some nice uh, uh, advanced networking things that are supported all these traffic splitting and stuff like that, that I haven't shown. Um, so, uh, and, and Quarkus is like, kind of makes a lot of sense to use in Knative context because uh, we have super fast startup time, we have minimal resource usage, and it is great because you just use your existing Java knowledge, you just leverage your existing, um, Java ecosystem knowledge. So that's all for my talk. And I can have a look at the questions. How can we create filters for content-based routing? In Camel, there is a DSL where you can apply and kind of uh, apply any kind of filtering. Is there a custom resource for that? So where was the broker? Yeah, yeah. So this filter here, uh, which is inside the trigger. So if you check a filter uh, or trigger object, it's it's like the YAML representation for it. You'll see a filter field in here, there. You can define a bunch of stuff. Um, so. Obviously, you can do stuff like the event types because every source um, is creating a cloud event with a, with a specific type. Like uh, GitHub is creating, GitHub source is creating like type or GitHub, I don't know, GitHub event, something like that. So you can use that in your filter. This is the most basic one. And there is also something called uh, cloud SQL filtering, which is still being improved. Uh, or well, actually, it is. It is. Uh, it is already work. It's already integrated. Um, but there was there were in the upstream discussions about um, 
adding it as a um, what's it called experimental feature or what so but there, there will be more advanced filtering options in the future uh, and that is kind of yeah that's a DSL basically that's exactly a DSL it's you can write uh, a thing is in a SQL like language you can get, write your filters like that 